Hi, and welcome to episode 13 of Girlfriend's Knitting uh, with a cameo from a chihuahua. You want to come say hi? Come here. Y'all have met one of my mongrels. This is another one. Come here. This one's pig. Say hi. Say hi. Look right there. Can you look in the camera? No? Okay, go play. He may or may not go play. Um, it is <laughs> April 24th. It's a Tuesday night. I probably won't upload this, though, until tomorrow morning. And I'm sorry for the whining dogs in the background. I've got all of them in here in the bedroom with me today. I'm actually trying to teach them to climb up the stairs up onto the bed. And Pig's the only one that has learned it so far. So, um, I'm Carolyn, also known as Ka Shirley on Plurk and Ravelry. And I have a whole bunch of stuff to talk about and show off today. So it may be a little bit more of a longer episode than normal. I also have a dog begging to be petted as I do this. So let's jump right in. I have several FOs, one of which I can show you. The Hermione's Everyday Socks. Look, it's an actual pair. They are no longer languishing. They are finished. I'm so excited. And they've got my hair all over them and dirt on the bottom of them because I have been wearing them out. Um, they are super comfy. I haven't worn them. It is getting to kind of be kind of warm. Um, but it got a little bit chilly here lately, and so I've been wearing them in the house and just around. So, Hermione's Everyday Socks. Um, let me just remind you of some of the details. It's the Hermione's Everyday Sock Pattern by Erica Louder, I believe. I may be mispronouncing her last name. I knit this with Kramer's yarn, sock yarn that I hand dyed in what I've been calling 80's Quidditch because it looks to me like those old rugby socks. And I knit it on a size US 1.5 needle from the top down. And it's got a modified eye of partridge heel. And so, there you go. My Hermione's Everyday Socks. And I originally started them for the student knits knit along, <coughs> statistics knit along. Sorry for the barking dogs. But that has long since been over, and I just, these were languishing and didn't get done. But now they are finished. FO number one. I actually have three FOs, but those are the only ones I can show you. Another FO was a swap package for the Knit Girls Afghanswear swap. I've been having a blast with that, and so I can tell you who my partner was now because she actually has the package. Um, and it was Tink Geek. And she got a October Aryan square in a dark kind of reddish burgundy um, merino. And if I can find my picture that I took of it, I will post a picture here. But if that doesn't happen, I, I apologize. <laughs> um, but you can check out the Knit Girls Ravelry page, and she's got all kind of pictures of the swap package that I sent her posted there, and she seems to really love it. Then I got my swap package in the mail, and it was the best swap package ever. I got a little note from Janet, who is Tink Geek. Uh, no, excuse me. Tink Geek was mine. Tink Tank was who sent me stuff. All kind of tinks going on. So I got confused. Okay, gorgeous square. I love pink. I love owls. So it is a pink owls square. And it's soft and it has a really nice drape to it. And it's made of the exact same yarn that I made my partner's square, but in a different color. So I thought that was interesting. And she sent me the pattern as well. And a notions bag. The notions in it are not all things she sent. She did send a few notions along. Some highlighter tape, a little fix-it tool. There's another dog. Say hi. You can't see him. He's black with a little goatee. This is Memphis. Quit. I got a little tin with all kind of stitch markers. 
And then, I can't decide what's my favorite, the square or this. A mug with my Ravelry name on it. Sorry. Isn't that awesome? Um, I love this. So that's my swap package that I got. Then the last FO, so the first FO is my Hermione's Everyday Socks. Then there was my Afghan Square. The third and final one was I did get this purple zebra socks finished as well. But Amy has them. <laughs> She's not at home. So I can't show you the purple zebra socks. She actually um, has had some medical issues this week. And so she wanted them to wear while she was going through a bunch of different medical things. And so she has them and she will be back at the house tomorrow. So I did get a lot of knitting done because I've been sitting around doing a lot of waiting in doctor's offices and things like that for the last week. So on to non-finished objects, but objects I worked on quite a bit. The first is my Something Blue lace square that I'm basically just making up the pattern as I go and it's all a big tangled mess. Let me see if I can show you. First of all, it's a pretty much six by six, maybe more like seven, but it's pretty close to six by six, just square stocking knit in a blue marble colorway. And then you can see at the top, I am adding a lace border. And so it takes quite a bit of concentration which was perfect for sitting in the doctor's office and sitting in the round hospital waiting rooms. So that is coming along quite nicely. I need to have it done by May 10th. I don't know if I'm going to have it done by May 10th. The wedding's not May 10th. The shower um, is May 10th. So hopefully I'll have it done by the shower. If not, the wedding's not till June, so I can definitely have it done by then. And so this is on a size 2. I'm using my uh, Chowgu Sharps. No, excuse me, they're high, high Sharps. I'm using my Chowgu Red Lace. And I'm using Jelly Bean Yarns in the blue marble colorway. It's a 80% merino, 20% silk. I love it. It's soft. It's beautiful. Here's the scheme. And it just has a very little bit of variegation. It's, it's just very, very lightly changed. Y'all could probably see that earlier when I held up the square. See, it's just a little bit. That's not the light. That is actually what it looks like. So again, it's on my Chowgu Red Lace size 2 needles. And it's knitting up great. Um, like I said, just a pattern I'm making. Sorry for those of you wearing headphones with my barking dogs everywhere. Okay, the computer's going to move because I unfortunately put one of my projects under the computer. Are y'all done yet? Alright, so I borrowed a trick from a few of the other podcasters and I put a stitch marker where I began. So I've knit about inch and a half. This is the front left panel. Seasick dog barking episode. This is the front left panel of the Corinne sweater. And it's in my bobbly yarn. And I haven't gotten a whole lot done. Like I said, I got about an inch done this week because I've been having more fun finishing up some other projects. So that's coming along slowly, but surely. And then now that I've got one swap package sent off, I have started on my next square. And of course I need to keep the square secret, but I want to show you the yarn. And oh, it's bleeding out from the light. I get it. 
it's actually more of a blue jean color than what it's showing up. And it has just a tiny bit of variegation, just like the blue marble. This is a yarn actually in a colorway specifically for my local yarn shop, Hank of Yarn. And it's knit up by Holiday Yarns. Super cheap, super cheap. It's 100% superwash merino. And it's in the hanky panky blue colorway. Because the name of the yarn shop's Hank of Yarn. And they have their logo is got blue and red in it. And so there's a hanky panky blue, a hanky panky, which is blue, white, and red, and then a hanky panky red, I think. I don't remember the name of the red. But it is very soft. I'm just adoring knitting with this. And so I'm going to keep the square secret, and of course I'm going to keep my swap partner's name secret. But if you wanted blues of some sort, this could be you. But there's a lot of people asking for blues, so I don't think I'm giving too much away. But So I got that today. I also bought my wheel. It's officially mine. I have a ladybug, and I am the proud, proud owner of it. So let me show you what I've been doing with my ladybug. First, Magma. This is the Unwind Yarn Company Fiber in Magma. I did a two-ply, mainly because I only have three bobbins still, so I need more bobbins. Then I can branch out. Um, it's pretty much a worsted weight. I got 300, uh, excuse me, I wish 300. I got 230 yards of a worsted weight. Um, let me see if I can undo it. I'll re -ski. I mean, I'll retwist it later, but it's not well balanced, as you can see. But that's okay. It's literally my first full skein. So I am very excited about it. So there is my magma. Yay! So then I started knitting my Gnome Acres. It's Green Lantern, 3.6 ounce, 100% merino top. Like I said, it's the Green Lantern colorway, and I've got all these little bitty balls where I have pre-drafted the fiber. So you can see it's got blues and greens and grays. Oh my gosh, this is spinning up thin. I'm not used to things spinning up thin. I'm new. I, you know, as long as it's not bulky, I'm happy. Look how this is spinning up. I hate that everything's washing out in the light tonight. Let me see if I can show you how thin this is. See, you can't even see it. I'm so excited. I'm loving this. It's really hard for me to spin because I'm not used to this. Um, this is the first half. So I split it in half. This is the bag full of the second half. And so I'll be working on that later. So that's what I'm working on right now. Then I have gone fiber buying crazy. So forgive me for all of the fiber buying. I'm going to just fly through it because I want to show it off, but I'm going to go quick. So, you know, I'm an Unwind Yarn Company addict right now. So once again, Unwind Yarn Company. This is feeling froggy. It's a really pretty lime green with pops of blue. And I just love it. It's like that froggy hat that I knit for Amy, but the reverse colors. Instead of that dark blue with pops of green, this is the green with the pops of blue. So I need to knit her something out of this to match her hat. That's what I think. But it's not all about Amy. It's all about me. So I needed something for me. 
And my color is pink. As Julia Roberts said, it's my signature color. Oh! It is this gorgeous pink with like hot pink, tiny, tiny bits of brown. It is so pretty. It too, um, this is actually a BFL Tussa Silk. I don't even know what that's going to do. I'm scared. Um, and I cannot pronounce the name, so I'm going to hold it up here. Sakura? Dana, I need help. What? How do you say that, and why did you name it this? Gorgeous. Because I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like I should know why she picked that name, and for whatever reason, I don't. So, that's my, arm, my Unwind Yarn Company goodness. Then when I was buying the wheel, I couldn't buy the wheel from Hank and not buy fiber. Um, and so she has some Anzula fiber. Hand dyed spinning fibers. This is a Coradale in Ocean. 100% Coradale. Let me hold it back here. Isn't that pretty? It's blues and purples and grays, just a little bit of green. <sighs> awesome. And I didn't really have anything that was real purple. The um, abalone was kind of purple, but not too much. So that's a Coradale. So I am trying to branch out. Remember we talked about how everything is merino. So I'm trying to branch out. So I have some um, BFL and Tessa Silk. I have the Coradale. And then this is BFL. It's another Anzula. Pure BFL, 100% BFL, in Garden. And it's just springy and made me happy. <sighs> Loveliness. Then, I've bought two more. I've got to stop. But maybe you'll understand when I tell you what else I bought. I bought the Feeling, Fro no, excuse me, the Froggy Monkey colorway from Gnome Acres. That's the Green Lantern, the company I bought the Green Lantern colorway from. And it's for a spinning knit along with uh, Knitting in Circles, so Froggy Monkey um, and DJ Knits a Lot. That's Amy and Darren from Knitting in Circles. And then Diane from Knittables. And so there was a Knittables colorway and a froggy monkey colorway and I just I had to pick one they were both gorgeous so I picked froggy monkey so that should be coming in the mail sometime soon because I was kind of late in getting that ordered then when I was around shopping on Etsy I found storied yarns and they have a Downton Abbey spin along and you could actually pick your own inspiration so I emailed Jessica at Storage Yarns and asked for my inspiration. I'm going to wait and tell you about it when I get the roving in. And so it'll be a few weeks, I think, before we're going to get the roving in on that. But I ordered a BFL. Um, so we'll see what that looks like. So I have no idea what this one's going to look like, the one from Storage Yarns. I told her what my inspiration was, and we shall see. So... Um, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to sharing that with y'all, what that even looks like. <sighs> love of spinning. So I haven't lost my love of knitting, not at all, but, oh, spinning's good. So if you, if you need to stay away from that spinning bug, mm, you need to be careful because it, it can bite you. Well, with that in mind, I don't normally do book reviews. But, you start spending so much money on certain things, you can't spend money on others. And since I do want to spend money on food and electric bills, I'm not spending money on books. I have an amazing library at my college, and they have books. They have like four shelves of knitting books. I have no idea why. So the first one I checked out, 100 Afghan Squares to Knit. 
guess why I need this book. So it's by Debbie Abrams. It's not the newest book in the world. Let me see the copyright date. It's 02, so it's 10 years old. And some you can tell that they're 10 years old. But a cabled square is a cabled square is a cabled square. So let me show you some of the things I like about this book. Number one, it says that there are 100 Atkins squares. And sure enough, she numbers them. I don't know if you can tell, but it says 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D. Which means she doesn't even cheat. If she's changing the colors, she doesn't call that 1, 2, 3, 4. That's still square one. I, she just changed the colors. So there are literally a hundred patterns, not just a hundred different squares she knit up. And I know that I've seen some podcasters review like magazines that say 42 flowers or whatever. And they're not, it's not actually 42. There's actually a hundred. So let's see what else I liked. Um, some of the blankets that she knit using these squares are just gorgeous. This one just makes me happy. I don't think I'd ever make that, but it just makes me happy to look at. It's got a lot of beads on it, and I think that'd be very uncomfortable. But like I said, it makes me happy to look at. And that's one of the things that I liked about this book. Um, I probably wouldn't use it for that. But it gives you a blanket to make out of a bunch of the different square patterns. So it's not just a square pattern encyclopedia. Here is another square that was so gorgeous, so intricate. I just had to show y'all. It's the square, I think it's called Rock Candy, down here at the bottom. Isn't that pretty? I can just see a little baby girl with that. Well, maybe not baby because there are beads on it, but young girl with that. Um, I'm trying, I'm trying. Oh, this one was just gorgeous. Building blocks for baby. I liked those colors. That could be a boy or a girl. It is spiral bound. I like spiral bound. I know other people do not. Personally, I think it's wonderful. Um, okay, so here's a negative. I'm not going to just be one of those people that ooh and ah over everything. I told you some things were kind of old fashioned. So it's knitting with sequins. I don't think that's bad. And I don't even know if it's necessarily old fashioned. I don't want a blanket with sequins on it. That seems extremely uncomfortable to me. But if you do, this is the book. So I, I don't like that. They actually have in the back an entire section on techniques. And she shows you how to knit with sequins. I mean, the block is pretty. I just wouldn't want it in a blanket. And they do. They, she shows you all of the different beading techniques. She shows you the different sequins techniques. So I have been able to use this book to get some of my next Atkin squares. So that's book number one that I checked out. And then book number two that I checked out was... One Scheme, 30 Quick Projects to Knit by Lee Radford. So it's an interweave press book. I'm sorry. This is not a good podcast today. Um, it too is not. <laughs> oh, I'm going to put a warning on the front. This too is not the newest of books. It's a 2006 And I don't particularly care for many of the projects in here. One that I do like 
is the unisex gloves. I don't like that picture though. That first glove, it looks like it's a dead hand hanging there. But I like this picture. Just a regular old guy wearing the gloves. And you can believe he would actually wear those gloves. Now, I don't necessarily care for this hat, but I thought the picture was clever. It's an asymmetrical cable hat. And the idea is you have one big cable and one small cable. So what she did... Let's pause, shall we? Maybe not. Okay. What she did was she put the big cables on front of the guy and then angled the girl to where you could see the small cable. So it's the exact same hat, but based on how the models are turned, you can see the different angles of the hat, all in the same picture. So I thought that was clever. A lot of cute baby stuff. The baby stuff in here, I would admit. Cute little scrap afghan. Scrap afghan. <laughs> it's been a long week. Scrap yarn baby jacket, baby sweater. Get rid of some of that leftover stash. Cute petal bibs. I am so going to make some of those. I have about three baby gifts I need to make. But then again, I didn't want to just brag about the book and say wonderful things about every single book just because this cracked me up. Look at this picture. Just your regular old Joe. It reminds me of my dad. But he's holding mohair pillows. Throw pillows. Why is he holding mohair throw pillows I, that just baffles me that <laughs> cracked me up when I was looking through here now later in the book now mind you these are all the same model these pictures I'm showing you there are many different models throughout the book but this guy is the same model throughout the book later in the book he's knitting now check out the rug though that rug is awesome it's called the Labyrinth Circle Rug. So we have a regular Joe who knits and holds throw pillows. I thought that was funny. So this was another one that I checked out from the library. So my library's got some good stuff. I checked out a third book, but I haven't really gotten a chance to look through it yet, and I don't think it's all that great, so I'm not even going to mention it. And I think that's it. Super long, super um, probably aggravating to listen to podcast this week. Thank you for hanging in there with me. Um, oh, and I'm even forgetting about fitness. <sighs> Water. I did good about half of the days. I did not as good a few of the days. And I did really bad two days where really bad equals no water at all. I found if I carry a bottle of water with me, I drink more. I also listened to one of our group members who said, drink first thing when you wake up, drink a few minutes before each meal. Also, that'll help you feel fuller so you won't eat as much. And I've tried that. That works well, too. So I need to carry a bottle of water with me and sort of plan when I'm going to drink the water throughout the day. So we're going to do another week. Four glasses, because I want to do it consistently before I bump it up. So four glasses a day, all week, drinking my water. Exercise, I have been getting a lot of exercise, but not traditional exercise. I have been running around like crazy. I'm absolutely exhausted. I have been driving a lot back and forth, but when I get to where I'm driving, there's a lot of walking, there's a lot of running around, and doing stuff. So I'm a lot more up and mobile instead of sitting at my desk. I have not spent the week sitting at my desk like I normally do. So in that sense, I've gotten a lot more exercise this week because I've had a lot more activity this week than normal. 
but that's it. So I'm sorry that this has been a very um, disjointed podcast this week. Thank you guys for hanging in there with me. Um, it is the 13th podcast. <laughs> Maybe 14 will be better. <laughs> See y'all next week.